In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters, brothers, that we might enter worthily into the Lord's holy sacrifice, let us first call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. 
Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Much, much of the time, uh, I try to make three points in my Sunday homilies. And today's reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to John gives me two points. And then that other reading from the first letter of John will give me point number three. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Point number one. That beautiful passage about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, tells us what, what Jesus came to accomplish. Ever since God created us, the human race has acted very much like sheep who continue to go astray. Rather than seeking to, the, to do the will of the one who created us and who knows what is best for us, we have each wanted to decide for ourselves what was right, what was wrong, even if that choice would be harmful to others or even to ourselves. Jesus came to gather every one of us back into the fold of his Father. And just as the Father knows Jesus and Jesus knows the Father, so Jesus knows each and every one of us by name. And he searches us out one by one by one. Point two. The good news about the Good Shepherd tells us how Jesus accomplished his mission and his ministry. He would lay down his very life for the sake of his sheep. Listen again to the words which he spoke. He said, this is why the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes my life from me, rather I lay it down of my own free will. 
From the beginning of creation, people like you and I have sought to do our own will. Now here comes the very divine Son of God in our weak human nature, and he seeks to do only the will of his Father. And in doing so, he opens the way to a new creation. Point three. We have to look back at the reading, not from the gospel according to John, but from the first letter of John to understand now why Jesus did what he did. He laid down his life so that we who accept his great gift of mercy could be called children of God, even if the rest of the world refuses to recognize us. And the apostle goes on to tell us that being restored to the family of the Father is not just what we shall later be. He says we are God's children right here, right now. That is the good news. In fact, that is the best news of all. So let's remember number one, two, three. Jesus came to bring back lost lambs like you and me. Two, Jesus came to restore us as children of God right here, right now. Three, in order to accomplish all this, Jesus freely and willingly gave up his life. God's love has given us every reason to rejoice, so let us go to his altar and give thanks. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We make our prayers to God our Father in the name of Jesus, who, through his resurrection, leads us as a good shepherd into the new life of grace. For the Pope, the bishops, and the priests of the Church, may they protect their flock in times of danger and serve them with love and fidelity every day of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government, may they always be aware that they represent the people and defend them from exploitation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life, within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from physical or mental disability, may they find inner healing and peace in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have lavished your love upon us and we make our prayers to you as the shepherd of our flock, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but he defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep whom you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, I just want to say a word of thanks to all the many, many people who make this ministry possible. Certainly to all those who are here today to worship our various ministries, but to you at home who support this ministry, I say thank you. And now, the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. The greatest victims of the January 2010 earthquake in Haiti were the young. More than 2,000 Haitian children underwent emergency amputations in the quake's aftermath. The Knights of Columbus, partnering with Project MediShare for Haiti, has pledged to make life-transforming prosthetic limbs available for every child amputee. These are literally her first steps. The Healing Hades Children program is allowing Hades youth to rediscover sport and to dream of a better tomorrow. Join the 1.8 million member Knights of Columbus in helping us continue to rebuild a country, one child at a time.